My mind is blown. Oracle just reported they missed on earnings. They missed on revenue. And they're up 3.7%. They're up over 5% at one point. They were supposed to make $1.65 per share with $14.55 billion in revenue. They reported $1.63 per share with $14.3 billion in revenue. Mo, why are they up 4%? Well, and they skyrocketed. <laughs> they were even. Yeah, but they said AI here. So there's two reports. <laughs> I don't even have the press release in front of me yet. OpenAI selects Oracle cloud infrastructure to extend Microsoft Azure AI platform. Oracle and Google, and Google Cloud announce a groundbreaking multi-cloud partnership. So who cares what the numbers are? So guys, if you're new to the channel, Mo and I don't really look at quarterly results as a way of defining we're going to buy or sell a company. We look at them and look for tidbits to see has the company changed in the positive or negative anyway. And we still run our fundamentals, even if... Even if Oracle said they just partnered with Jesus Christ himself on, an, on, a, on a cloud computing kind of deal, I would say, okay, how much is Jesus going to pay them? It's still about every investment, the present value of all future cash flow. Now, if you like that, this makes sense to you, new to the channel, and you like hearing earnings releases, economic releases, et cetera, subscribe to the channel. But Oracle is now up 5%. After hours, and Mo is waiting for, they haven't even released it on their website? No. Okay, let's take a look at Oracle here. Oracle, all-time high was, Jan was March 21st, 2024, of 132.77, and they're starting to creep up on that <clears throat> right now. So they could be hitting that after hours today. 52-week uh, low, 99 bucks. So from, from, from December 13th to March 21st, they were up 33%. It's a pretty good run right there. Now remember... Go ahead, Mo. We got some information here. Okay, let's hear it. So total revenue, thirteen point three billion, up seven. Fourteen point three. Uh, yeah, up seven percent. Um, let's see what else we have. Cloud revenue up twenty five percent at five point one billion. Twenty five percent growth Whoa. in cloud revenue. What's up? Cloud infrastructure revenue one point eight billion, up forty nine percent. Forty nine percent. Cloud cloud infrastructure. Cloud application up fourteen percent. So is there a lot of growth in the there's cloud a, there's for there's this company? There's a lot company? of cloud stuff here, all up. So the lowest growth number in the cloud is that 14%. Years and years ago, AWS is a leader in cloud computing. We said, guys, it's a very high margin business. A lot of people are going to get into it. Okay. Now you might sit there and say, well, that was obvious. Yeah, but back then it wasn't obvious. Back then, that was the reason to buy Amazon. Now, Oracle, Google, Microsoft. In fact, I think Microsoft is one of the biggest leaders in it. Alibaba, they're all doing cloud computing. And I love it. They should. It's a very high margin business. But comparable to NVIDIA and their chips, it's just a way of looking. Whenever you see a company have fast growth into a certain area with high margin, you've got to expect there's going to be competitors. Now, what's the company doing right now? 7.5%. This is an all-time high now. If you include after hours, we're at an all-time high for Oracle. $350 billion market cap. Last year, did $12.3 billion in free cash flow. And that's higher than their net income, but their five-year average free cash flow is pretty much even. They pay a dividend of 1.25%. Now, Mo, let me guess. They announced some sort of stock repurchase. Oh, we're going to find out. Guys, stock repurchases should only be done on cheap shares. It's hard to say that 28 times free cash flow is cheap. It could be. It could be. But I look at return invested capital here going, yeah, 19.5% is pretty solid. But how are they going to grow their revenue so much that it justifies this higher multiple for so long that buying back shares at this valuation is hard? It, it, it makes sense. I don't know. Let's go check out the eight pillars here. Ooh, nothing here yet. Five X's, guys. Cash flow down, net income down, high PE, high price of free cash flow, a lot of debt relative to their free cash flow. Man, I'm actually surprised by this. I would have thought a lot different. Nothing on the repurchase end, by Nothing the way. Nothing yet? Mm -mm. Although announce it. Analyst estimates. Not much growth here. I mean, decent. 570 to 817. 11%, 11%, 14%, 8%, 5% revenue growth, according to analysts over the next four or five years. Again, according to analysts. Revenue? <laughs> Wow. Seven, eight, 10, 10 and a half, 11 and a half, 20. Wow. Growing to $95 billion in revenue. As a comp, Microsoft does like $260 billion in revenue. Wow. I remember when Oracle and Microsoft were battling. Larry Ellison, Larry Ellison, the CEO of, um, of Oracle, was so big on getting Bill Gates in trouble, he hired private investigators to literally go through 
Bill Gates's trash. Isn't that incredible? He, they actually did that to get trash on them. And Larry Elson's one of the richest men in the world, owns a big chunk. By the way, little known fact, mm-hmm. his daughter was the producer of Zero Dark Thirty. No kidding. I think, I think her company funded Zero Dark Thirty, which is a phenomenal movie, if you ask me. Wow. So anything left on the uh, anything left on the the report that we need to talk about, Mo? Nope. We, really? We covered everything. Yeah, they're they're gonna a board of directors declared a quarterly cash dividend of forty cents. Um, everything else seems that they're going to be announcing when they speak. Probably in an hour. Okay. Oracle's all time high back in two thousand was forty five dollars per share. It took. How many years to get back to that level? I'm just keep going. The all-time high didn't hit until December of 2014. After LeBron came back to Cleveland, (laughs) that's the next time. It took 14 years for the company to see an all-time high. In those 14 years, I want you to see what happened. In In 2014, they did $38 billion in revenue. In 2000, they did $10 billion in revenue. 3.8 3.8 times greater. They did $11 billion in profit in 2014. And in 2000, they did 6.3. So 66% more profit, 3.8 times more revenue. And the stock took 14 years to get back to its all-time high. That's what I mean when I say in the short run, stocks are a voting machine. In the long run, they're a weighing machine. That's what we're trying to teach here. We're trying to teach the process. Guys, if you're looking for somebody to hand pick stocks for you to go buy, you're at the wrong channel. Go find the other idiots on YouTube. If you're here to learn a process that you can apply to your own investments and get ideas about other companies through us, more power to you. I share what stocks I own, but I always tell you, don't buy stocks that I own just because I own it. Don't even buy stocks that Warren Buffett owns just because he owns it. Apply the principles that they teach in order to apply them to your investments. So far this year, Oracle has purchased back $2 billion in stock, which is about 0.6% of their market cap, which, oh my God, they're up 9% yeah, now. that's crazy. That's the market we're in right now, guys. All-time highs in a NASDAQ, all-time highs in every single major company. Oracle looks like a cheap company at $400 billion market cap, right, Mo? Yeah, I mean. Cheap company. Geez. Come on, guys, go out there and get them. So the big key here is, What's Oracle worth to us? Now, I don't remember the last time I did Oracle. Do you remember? Do you even do, remember doing Oracle? I well? did. When did I do this thing? I did it. No, I did actually recently. Oh, I did mine. Geez, 2022. Mine was 2024. Guys, so Mo, I did a 10 year analysis. Okay. I did three, five, and 8% revenue growth. Oh, wow. What'd you, what'd I did you do? One, three, and five. What was that? I did one, three, and five. Yeah, you know, I think they have more revenue growth I mean, than that. <laughs> With all this AI stuff, who knows? I mean, they did 9.5% in the last year. Yeah. So now profit margin, I did 21, 23, and 25. And their free cash flow is higher. So I did 25, 28, and 31. Okay. Because look, they're growing their cloud computing. That's a high margin business. So I think they can get a little bit of aggressive. PE, I put 15, 18, and 21 for both PE and price of free cash flow. What'd you do? I did 15, 17, and 19 for okay. PE and price of free cash flow. So about the same thing. Yeah. And for my desired return, 9%. Guys, I don't believe 9% is the right number. The market does 9 or 10%. I put this in here to see what's essentially, what's this company worth? Now, from there, you need to put your own margin of safety in here. And of course, if you have our software, if you have this tool, put in a number much higher. That number is going to vary depending on how how much you know the company, the risks involved, et cetera. But 9%, just to sit here and show this, hit the analyze button. And again, if you're interested in learning about our community of like-minded investors that can help you invest, as well as all the tools we have here, Click the link in the description below. Join the community. We have a great trial, one-week trial. Check it out. Hit the analyze button. Boom. I have a low price of 60 to 70, high price of 130 to 160, middle price of 80 to 5 to 100. I have my watch list at 80 bucks. Guys, that's where I stand. I appreciate your time. And thank you very much for your time. And please make sure you subscribe to this channel.